we're hoping that you're having a good day. We are, yeah. It's that time of year when there's, well, there's not a whole lot going on. Yeah, folks still recovering from maybe spending a lot over the holidays. Yeah, <laughs> it happens. But mm -hmm. how about a little bit of free fun this weekend? John Monk for Go419 has just that this morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, especially on a rainy day like today, you're always looking for indoor activities to do. And this weekend, it'll be a little drier, but the ground will still be wet with not a lot to do. But So we're here inside of the National Museum of the Great Lakes, the first resident of the Marina District uh, a few years back. I'm joined with Ellen Kennedy with the museum. Thanks for having us here today. Oh, of course. Happy so, to have you. Yeah, uh, obviously, first off, if there's anyone watching who isn't too familiar with what this museum offers here in uh, East Toledo, give us sort of a quick history lesson to what you guys have been doing here. Uh, yeah, so we came to the Toledo area in, uh, we opened our doors in April of 2014, so we're coming up nine years uh, this coming April um, and we preserve and make known the history of the Great Lakes is our mission statement um, and we do that through our 11,000 square feet of really hands-on and interactive exhibits it was really important to us that we make sort of a family friendly and engaging experience for everybody well, and I mean frankly you know I grew up in the region but I didn't know a lot about Lake Erie history and you know once I moved here to the Toledo area you realize how vital mm -hmm. to the local economy and sort of to the growth of this region the, the Great Lakes uh, the Great Lakes were. Yes, yeah, the Great Lakes have been a, you know, transportation superhighway. They've really helped, you know, invigorate our economy mm -hmm. uh, for centuries. All right, and so this weekend, you know, we have a, a holiday weekend coming up. So what are you guys offering for folks in Toledo this weekend? Yes, so we um, are doing an, a free weekend. So all admission is free for everybody um, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday of the Martin Luther King holiday weekend. Yeah, and I mean, uh, I we said, you know, it's going to be rainy weather today, but I mean, come on, it's still winter, it's still a little chilly outside. So, of course, if you're looking for an indoor, um, if you're looking for an indoor activity for you kids, obviously this is this is where you want to be. Yeah. All right. So, uh, what can people experience who, you know, like me, didn't know anything about Lake Erie history? What are some of the some of the exhibits or some of the things that you might find that the, uh, people visiting might find interesting? Um, yeah, so we have a lot of different stories we tell. Um, you know, we're, we're covering the kind of vast expanse mm -hmm. of Great Lakes history. We cover all five of the Great Lakes and stories from um, American history, and there's some Canadian history in mm -hmm. here as well. Um, we tell the story, we're standing in front of one of our lighthouse lenses, so we tell the story of the importance of the lighthouses on the Great Lakes as well as uh, Great Lakes shipping and a lot of other um, really kind of exciting and interesting stories. Yeah as well. And then Kenny, why don't you look to your left there just a little bit. Right behind these uh, uh, lighthouse lenses is an exhibit for the Edmund Fitzgerald, which is probably one of the mm -hmm. more popular uh, shipwrecks in Great Lakes history. Yes, so we um, are very lucky to have one of the life rafts that was on board the Edmund Fitzgerald uh, when it was lost in 1975. Um, it was had really big Toledo connections as well. It was known as the Toledo Express because mm. it was here mm -hmm. um, bringing iron in and loading up coal um, quite often during its career. And I guess, uh, why should, you know, maybe a younger generation, like my kids, they're in elementary school and, and middle school, why should they be given an appreciation for the Great Lakes? Like, why should the kids who are on their tablets and in, in the information age, why should they be taught uh, sort of this regional history? Oh, I mean, there's so many reasons. Um, you know, there's a vast history of sort of how we have utilized the Great Lakes for, you know, our economic growth, but also they're, um, 84% of North America's fresh water are in the Great Lakes, mm -hmm. and that is yep. a resource that is unmatched in anything yep. we have. Yep. So yeah, I mean that, that brings to mind, do you have any exhibits or maybe any talk exhibits about Lake Erie water quality? Would that be something that, that you guys could fold into to, to the museum? Um, so that is a topic that we, we don't have a ton of in the exhibits mm -hmm. right now, but we cover it in programming. We yeah. actually are going to have some lectures coming up this year um, to talk about water quality yeah. and the Lake Erie environment. Um, we actually do have a book club that we're doing over the winter months that we are meeting virtually um, and our March book um, is about the environment and the water quality. Yeah quality, excuse me, it's the death and life of the Great Lakes okay. by Dan yep. Egan. Yep, so I mean, 
that's a part of our current, <laughs> you know, history with the Great yeah. Lakes. So, real quick, give us sort of the rundown of the times uh, this weekend and on Monday yeah. when people can come visit for free. Yeah, of course. So on Saturday we're open from 10 to 5. Sunday is a little bit later. We're open from noon to 5, and then Monday will be 10 to 5 again. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for having us. We'll have more on the free weekend here at the National Museum of the Great Lakes coming up later today for my Go 419 story in the 5:30. But for now, reporting live from East Toledo, I'm John Monk, WTOL 11.